Hi, and welcome back to our uh, my short series of videos on um, the various I.O. functions that you might find useful in C, input-output functions, including fscanf, fgetS, and now it's time to talk about fread. Uh, fread also has some special relevance to you in terms of projects in this class, because we're going to need to use that and its partner, fwrite, to um, write structs to disk and then read those structs back in as a part of the project, as part of our ongoing uh, experimentation with sort of structs as a database mechanism. So um, here's fread. Um, fread, so at one end of the spectrum, I think I mentioned this before, is fscanf does a whole bunch of functions, including whatever conversion you want, acts a little weird with strings, but it basically does, uh, it's really good if you want to convert from strings to numbers, for instance. Uh, at In the middle is fgetS, which is very good at reading lines, doesn't do anything else than the line except the handy utility functions of stopping when it comes to a new line, replacing that new line with a null character, and counting bytes to make sure it doesn't overrun your buffer. Those are all really useful I.O. functions. Now we're coming to the uh, very other end of the spectrum, to fread. And although we're going to use fread, ultimately, <clears throat> to read to, to read structures, we've written structs, uh, is actually just reads bytes. This is kind of the lowest level of C. Uh, you tell fread where to put the bytes, how many bytes to read, how many times to read that number of bytes, and where to read it from. So that's exactly what's in the piece of code you see there. Uh, fread returns a result, which is the number of times it read the, how much, the specified number of bytes. That part is always a little fuzzy for people, so we'll walk through that again in just a minute. It reads them into buffer. In this case, that's going to be my big uh, array of 2,000 bytes. Uh, it just needs to be big enough to hold the amount you're actually reading. Next, I'm only going to tell it to read 50 bytes. Now, I could read uh, 1,999 bytes, but I am going to read 50 bytes to make a demo. So that's what the 50 means. The 1 next to it means read those 50 bytes one time and stop. If you make that value um, larger than 1, so you make it 2, uh, F read would read 50 bytes two times, a total of 100 bytes. So it's kind of like it has a little loop built in. Uh, you tell it how much, how big each chunk is and how many chunks you want. This turns out to be really handy with structs because we tell it the size of the struct, which the compiler will tell us with the size of function, and we tell it how many structs we want to read, and we can actually read an entire array of structs with one F read if we need. But remember, really, Efri doesn't even care about structs. It doesn't care about ints, floats, bytes. It just reads bytes. So, okay. So there's no conversion going on here. That's why it's ideal for reading binary data, like what will be in your struct, from disk. Because if you just F write, as we'll see in a minute, uh, an int, let's say, or a float, uh, or a short string out to disk, what goes in the file is not necessarily exactly the same as what you would see if you print F'd it and got it in ASCII. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the code, a code example that actually just uses fread to read um, bytes. And then in a subsequent video, we'll go through actually writing structs and reading structs using fread. I'm going to share this my Visual Studio code screen and show you an example with uh, fread. Okay, here's a program uh, in running an old version of Visual Studio code uh, on my uh, Mac. And this one actually, just like the demo we did for fscanf and the demo we did for fgetS, it's just going to read that same file, the same science fiction story, and print out what it read, and you'll see a difference in the way fread works, and it will be apparent from that difference one way in which it differs from both fscanf and fgetS. So, by now, the uh, inclusion of standard .h, uh, and should be clear to you what that does, because fread is defined there along with all those other I.O. functions we're using. You've seen buffer before. 
that's a large, relatively large number of bytes. So I could F read up to 2000 bytes uh, into that buffer. Now I'm actually going to read a much smaller number to make a point about how F read works. And I initialize it to zero uh, just for convenience. We F open the file and F open, you'll notice is exactly the same whether you're F opening for scan F, F opening for F get S or F opening for F read. All you're really doing is telling C to associate the name of a file, this one would have to be in the current folder, with a file pointer. So what happens under the hood is that C tells the operating system <clears throat> to go and find that file, uh, get some data from it, and get ready to read from it. If it can't find it, it returns null, like maybe I typo the name, or I forgot that I put this story in documents, but I put my code in on the desktop, who knows. Um, anyway, those will fail. It'll fail to open and we'll exit the program, which is about all we can do. Once we succeed in opening it, we're going to see the same kind of loop that you saw with the other IO functions, except that the condition for termination is a little different. So, uh, F read into buffer 50 bytes one time from FP. So go to the file on authorizedbread.txt, read the first 50 bytes put them in buffer and give me back a number, which is a number of, not the number of bytes, the number of chunks you successfully read, namely one. I told you to read one, assuming the file is at least 50 bytes long, we're gonna get back a one, and that's gonna let us go in the while loop because a one is not a zero. There, we're gonna print what we read and just go back around and do exactly the same uh, F read. Once we're all done, we're going to F close the file for all the good reasons we described in the other videos. Let's run this pro let's compile and run this program and uh, see what we get. I'll make the bottom window a little bigger. I'll compile in my uh, <coughs> old school way. This is called read demo f read C. I'll name the output file f read demo. This would be freedemo.exe on the Windows. And let's see if it compiles okay. Compiled okay <clears throat> with no errors. Again, might have been some warnings that got suppressed and should have been turned on, but does it work well enough for our demo? To run the file, the name of the file, and the operating system will find the executable file and run it. Now let's look a little bit at the output. Remember when we used F get S, we got the complete paragraphs because they were all on the line. So we got a line, a blank line, a line, a blank line, a blank line. It might have word wrapped into several uh, lines on my screen, but in fact, uh, we read the entire line. When we tried F scan F, we just got one word, 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 one word on each output line. Here, we're getting, notice the, the nice, relatively smooth right margin. That's because we're reading 50 characters and stopping each time. Because FRead only reads as much as you tell it to. And so I'm telling it over and over again in the loop, read 50 in the buffer, read 50, read 50. So it ends up looking kind of like a newspaper column in that it has almost justified the text into 50 byte lines. So that just demonstrates that FRead uh, is completely um, naive about line endings. It's completely naive about conversions. All it does is read however many bytes you tell it to read. If I told it to read 100 bytes, these lines would be twice as long. That's the only difference. So in the last video for this section, we're going to go through and use um, fwrite, which is a companion to fread. And as you may imagine, it also just writes out bytes to disk without modifying them in any way. And we're going, to, we're going to populate a struct, write that f write the struct out, and f read the struct back in. And f write and f read are ideally suited for those purposes. And this is basically project eight, so this is a useful preview for you, I think. And with that, um, I will uh, see you in the next video.